this is my office for the day. Right, so it's about time I got on with cleaning the uh, the underseal and the old rust and stuff from underneath this MG. So, we shall have a quick look underneath. Basic stuff. I'm uh, going to start there over on the right hand side and just work my way back bit by bit. Also, need to cut this cage out at some stage, the battery tray cage thingy. Uh, use your weapons. A knotted wire wheel on the angle grinder. And you see, it's just a pin scaler, descaler thingy. Uh, air operator jobby. Right, okay. Let's go. needle scalers uh, the more you become adept with them it's not just a, a case of pushing uh, with the edge of them or with the end of them uh, and it's not always the case of pressing really hard either because if you get some some bars which really are not looking like they're coming off what I've found is that if you actually press not lightly but not with massive force sideways and it's so you actually press it sideways that way uh, and just let it drum away at it eventually it makes it nice and loose um, so there's loads of different techniques to this and they're not all, you know, as hard as you can and because uh, quite often, remember these needle scalers are going in and out you can actually push the sealer into the corners which is what you don't want, you want to take it off so yeah, you're going to see me pushing it that way because you get like a scraper um, using it side on uh, pressing it hard, not pressing it hard, there's all sorts so there isn't just one way of doing this and the more, it's like any tool the more you use it, the more you become adept with it hopefully and um, more effective it can be. But let's keep going. In a minute, what I'm going to do is get rid of all these extraneous um, fuel lines and hydraulic lines and things. Um, I just wanted to get into this today because uh, it's a while since I've been under this and done an awful lot. So I just wanted to get some of this done today. Uh, but yeah, what are the things I'm going to need to do? Particularly before we move this, uh, this battery tray is uh, to take some few more photographs you know it's exactly where everything is mounted all these little clips and things because when we rebuild a new battery tray or graft new sides and bottom or whatever we decide to do we're going to need to reproduce these um, these mounting points that you see okay quick recap on where we're to um this one seems to be coming off really quite well and relatively quickly actually yeah this um these wires and things and tubes and whatever starting to get in the way now so I'm going to do a little bit of dismantling and get um, get them out of the way. Uh, move the stuff we don't want, and uh, oh, move the stuff we're going to keep, and um, remove the stuff that we're not going to keep, just to get it out of the way. I don't want to damage it, especially things like this wiring loom and stuff. I don't want to be damaging that uh, with the the grinder or the um, the needle scaler. Uh, right, let's get some of this stuff off. Most of the, um, the extraneous bits and pieces of pipes and whatever removed. I remember in one of those was actually a fuel pipe down there. So that's uh, I was pinching the end of it or unpinching the end to see if there was any fuel left in the line. I did try and run it dry when I took the tank out. Um, I think the next thing I'll do, I'm going to tie all of these back so that they are well safe away from anything that's going to cut through uh, the, the wiring harness and whatever. I do not want that as a hassle. Then I'm going to measure the, the battery uh, box you can see lower parts of it are rotten and someone's patched it up and you know, all that's going, why not? I'll just make an enclosed box as well um, with, I think, a vent on it because it needs to vent to the atmosphere, doesn't it? Because it's a battery, obviously, I think that's why it's open anyway. And um, But we'll put the vent higher up. I, I don't see any reason why it needs holes all over it just to rot. Anyway, I'm going to measure it. I'm going to cut it out 
and then we'll see uh, exactly what we have to make and exactly what we have to clean off before we start fabricating anything. Okay, so, sorry for the sound here, but I'm actually wearing a mask, as you can imagine. Uh, this is what we're left with. Uh, we're left with just good metal, I think, around the top there. Certainly on this side, much better. I think that's because this side's had a lot more oil and whatever to uh, to protect it. But, you know, if all the rock goes out of this side, possibly a little bit more to cut out there, down that other side. Other than that, we've now got something really nice and sound that we can weld to. And leave that little bit at the top also gives us the dimensions for the box anyway, uh, which we're going to remeasure. So we just need to make sure that our nice new steel box uh, basically will mate up to that, which uh, can't be bad, and it will place the box in exactly the right position. Uh, right, okay, a little bit more measuring, and I think I'll start to um, look at making a box. Uh, but first, I'm going to have a break, let some of this milk and um, smoke clear. Uh, but yeah, we'll make up this box, look at where it's going to go, and then we'll clear a bit more muck off this uh, the underneath. You can have a look on that side, you can see that that's all surface rust there. I know on the camera it looks quite rusty, but it genuinely is just surface rust. And we can get out a lot of the corners a lot better now that we've got rid of that, um, the, uh, the battery box. Right, let's keep going. Okay, so again, I'm sorry for the quality of the audio, but I've got one of these gas mask things on a respirator. Okay, so uh, you see quite a bit of this load is absolutely perfect underneath this under sealer. Um, okay, some rusty bits obviously they're going to have to be dealt with and, and treated as well. The vast majority of this is really, really good. Um, this is the reality really of doing up old cars if you want to restore cars, it's not all, you know, putting in brand new interiors and doing a little bit of wiring. You know, you're going to spend a lot of your time on your back underneath it, or if you've got a rotisserie like I did with the E-Type, you're going to be still covered in muck, you'll just be standing up covered in muck. Okay, so this is all that's left of the battery box, uh, cut out in bits, you've just seen me do it. Bottom was all rotted out, I think it's a bit of a crap design anyway, having holes all in the sides and stuff. Um, it really just needs a small vent so it's not venting any, any gases from the battery into the car. But that could normally just be a little pipe or just, you know, one of these little holes. I'll probably just put one hole in one side nice and high up, out the way of the, you know, the, the stream of mud that gets into the thing. Anyway, uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tack this together, just a couple of wells, and it'll make it easier for me to take measurements off it and, and basically rebuild what needs to go back on the car. This looks well, some of it might look fairly solid. If you were standing here looking at it, you would see that a lot of this is actually decent metal. If you can see, that's that's obviously not rusty. And however, parts of it are rusty, and um, it's been welded to and, and sort of bodged and repaired and all sorts a few times. So, as we just make a new box, it's easy enough to make one rather than do this. And as I say, I can I can amend the um, the design, I guess. Uh, right. So a few tacks in this, and we'll just make it into a rough shape of the box that we want to build.
head start with this because somebody gave me, I actually don't know what these are off, but they're from um, a classic car somewhere. Somebody fabricated or mended a couple of old footwells. And um, to me, that's looking like the, uh, the makings of a battery bus. It's not far off, is it? Uh, so we've got somewhere to start anyway. Um, well, let's have a look. You see here is the product of about two hours of darting in and out underneath the car, cutting bits of cardboard, um, angle finding, measuring. Uh, the box uh, which came out from under the car, which is um, obviously this thing, it was so mangled and I couldn't really I could barely measure an angle off it. Um, so a lot of it was trial and error lying under the car, cutting bits of cardboard and stuff. So we now have our new cardboard templates. Now you'll see the shape of this. Obviously, it's a trapezoid, but it's um, it's an asymmetric bloody trapezoid. So to try and find all the angles when the actual thing that came out of the car was knackered and bent it was um, what well, wasn't easy. But anyway, that's the side of the battery box. Well, that's a template for the side of a battery box on an MGB GT. So there it is. Um, Right, so obviously we're going to need to transfer this to steel. Now I'm using some. Up, I'm using up some used bits of steel. So uh, what I've done, obviously, there's some steel still left on the car that wasn't rotted, that was cut above the holes that were in the side of the the battery box. So I'm going to leave those on because it means I can use some scrap bits of steel, i.e., these things here. And I'm not. Uh, I'm not cutting like large pieces out of um, uh, big pieces of sheet steel that I've got. So to do that, what I've also done is. I've cut the top edge of this side, which is the left side of the car of the battery box. I've cut this side down to match what's on the car height-wise, and I'm just working out where the overlaps go. We'll transfer that to a piece of steel, and then we'll cut it out. The other side, uh, there is a little bit left on the car, and it's shaped on the top, so I'll, I'll come back to that in a minute. What I do want to do, though, for some reason, I don't know why, I'm not ever going to have to do this again, but I want to keep one of these intact, because it took me so long to make it. I really want to keep it intact. Um, Although, to be honest, if I photograph it and then um, measure the sides, then there'd be no problem reproducing it if anybody needs uh, one of these sides. Right, uh, I'll get on with um, transferring these marks to a piece of steel. We'll do some cutting and then we'll take it from there. Okay, so what we have here, well, initially that's a failed attempt from earlier to make the side of this, um, this battery box. But there's enough steel left in it to, um, to enable me to put this template over it to mark out. Um, you know, we'll cut this to the, the new shape. So, we'll keep one edge intact as it is, save so me cutting it, that's the bottom edge. I'll let that go to there. Right, now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna mark up this edge. There you go. Now we want a little bit of an overlap on the top because this is the edge that's left on the car. Okay, so we're going to need to overlap onto that to weld onto it. It's absolutely solid. Uh, there's no rust on it at all. So what basically all I need to do is just clean the edge and then weld this to it. So initially I'm going to do a bit of a dotted line here. Just to remind me not to cut along that line. So if you see me try and cut along this line, shout out. Because it means I've cut too much off. Because I need that. So that's plus overlap. X overlap. X overlap. I don't know what it means anyway. Oh. There we go. Just to check if it makes sense, and we'll actually go to the corners. Sorry about that. Clanging. Yes, just about. There we go. And as far as overlaps go, it doesn't need loads, but I quite like it to be strong. Um, this is underneath the car, so you're not even going to see it. But I do want it to be nice and strong, and I'd like to do it with uh, rosette wells along. So, if I give that. Um, oh, I don't know, a couple of centimetres. Let's give it the, keep as much metal as we can in this. 
we'll put the overlap to there. So we'll use this as our initial marker. And then we'll just parallel that line across like that. And that is going to be our cut line. So the idea is that we're going to cut this. We're going to put holes. We'll punch holes in this or drill holes in this. Clean the piece up that's still on the cart, which will overlap it to there. And then we'll use rosette wells to keep it on. And then we'll use seam sealer to make everything nice. Uh, this rear edge should go right up to the bulkhead along here. And it will leave about half a centimeter between the edge of the steel and the bulkhead. But it will have about a centimeter and a half of overlap on the inside. Uh, so same sort of deal there. We'll, put, um, we'll obviously put some holes in this to, uh, to, to rosette weld onto what's on the car. I should make it nice and strong. So we're doing one side at a time anyway. So this is the left-hand side of the car and this is the outer facing edge. So this is the rear. So you know, that's the front, isn't it? The front and this is the rear edge. And while we're there, you'd be surprised how easy it is. Once you cut one of these, sometimes you take your labels off and you know, it, it's very easy to just get turned over on a bench and you forget which way around it is. So anyway, there we go. There's our next two cuts. I'm gonna put a new disc in the grinder and we'll get this cut. Here's a tip. Don't buy cheap grinding discs. Just cause there's like 50 for two quid or something, doesn't mean that they're decent, you know? Uh, put it like this. Cause you know, we're all, we're all tempted by a bargain at the car shows. Um, this brings it home to you. People can tell you that um, oh, the, you, know, you can cut twice as much of this disc as another one, but you're thinking, yeah, but I get 50 of them, it's great. Put it like this. On the cheaper discs, you're going to be inhaling most of it because they just fall to pieces. They, this is the cheapest, but they, they literally grind to dust as they're cutting the metal, which these do, of course, but these decent discs don't um, turn to dust anything like the cheap ones. You know, that's the reason the cheap ones don't last is that they're turning to dust while you're doing it. Your whole workshop gets covered in this horrible dust. And, you know, we all wear masks while we cut things. But if the workshop is full of that dust, every time you move something, you're going to kick the dust up again. You're going to breathing it in. So unless you want to breathe that disc in, don't buy the crap ones. All right, let you over. Let's do some cutting. Right, so we're back underneath the cart, and the problem we've got are for the left hand side of this box. Uh, you can see the battery box is going to mount left side of the cart, right side of the car there, and that's obviously inside the car. So we're looking at the right hand side of the box now, which is this here, and it needs to mate up to the surface, which if we're looking directly up, is bent. Okay, so what we're gonna need to do is cut out the piece of steel and then we'll just hammer and dolly it so it, uh, it, will, it will weld up to that basically. But it's not so bad because this is our old battery box and there you go. We've got the edge reproduced there effectively. So we just need to hammer and dolly the new piece so that it, uh, it matches this and it overlaps a little bit beyond it this way. Right, let's get it cut out of a piece of steel and we'll start hammering. Okay, so that's our right side face already cut. And what we need to do, we need to match this top edge to this profile here to weld it onto the car. It's not gonna butt weld, it's actually gonna overlap it slightly, but that's still the shape that we need to make. So what I'm gonna do is go back underneath the car, mark out a point on the car and on this. Then I'm also gonna transfer those marks to this. Okay, so we know where this bend actually is. 
So, because obviously we need to know where along this top edge to actually um, make the profile with the hammer. Right, I like everything. There's, there's, I can't really get a, a camera mount down here, so it's going to be a little bit awkward. But the idea is that I make some marks on this part of the car. Take this piece, which actually cuts off the car, and then transfer those marks to our new piece of steel. Um, I'll bring you back once those marks are done because it's, it's impossible for me to hold this. You're looking up at the floor, essentially, you can see the inside of the car there through the window. Right, so you're looking at the right hand side of the car. So, this is the box section that we cut off. What I did, I pushed that up against here. Like that. Made some marks that match up with marks on. On this, and marks on the inside of here. Then, I transferred those marks to the inside of our new piece. So we can see exactly now where we need to make our hammer and dolly and fit. Right, I'm getting out from under here. It's dead dusty and I don't know if you can see, but it's freezing. There you go. We can all see those marks a little bit better now. I've used a silver sharpie. Yes, you can get a silver sharpie. Isn't that marvellous? So those marks need to mace up there. Right, onwards. Let's get a hammer in. So there you have it, as the old saying goes, it fits where it touches. Right, so we'll just make that just a little bit nicer, although again, it's hidden underneath the car, so you're not going to see much anyway. And um, yeah, we'll take it from there. Right, so now we're going to need to make a base. Uh, we can fit it on this edge, you know, plenty of So what I'm going to do, I'm going to draw it around this. Uh, and then I'm going to leave around about a centimetre and a bit all around and then I'll draw it around again and mark out where the cut needs to be. So I'll actually have a fold line and a cut line as well. So there you have it. I'm gonna just take those off. So there you have it. That's the base done. So what I'm thinking of doing now is I'll weld this all up and then I'll just make the front face to fit, you know, the box that I've built. It's gonna be interesting enough making all this fit onto the car without um, making what one, two, three, four pieces and hoping they all go together. So whatever the inconsistencies are in the shape of this, that are in the shape of this, I'll take up with whatever shape the front needs to be. 
make it as squared as I possibly can. I keep reminding people I don't um, I don't do this for a living, obviously. It was I'd starve, wouldn't I? Um, I actually had a comment on one of the last videos that it did. It said uh, we in the states wouldn't take our cars to someone like him. He's using the wrong screwdrivers and the wrong bits and pieces. I wouldn't take my car to him. Um, yeah, I wouldn't take my car to me either because I don't do this for a living. It's not my job. <laughs> this is just for a bit of fun. This. So. Um, Let's ignore the fact that he was in the States and I live in the UK, so he's definitely not going to bring his car to me. So that's uh, one customer I didn't want that I'm not going to get, if you see what I mean. Right, let's do some welding. <laughs> been at this now for about six hours and uh, that's pretty much got this box knocked off now. Um, and I'm obviously, well now I'm getting tired because I haven't stopped at all and I'm starting to drop things and I've burnt myself before so I think it's time to call it a day. Come back tomorrow, finish this off, uh, dress it all, fit it to the car and uh, get it painted up. Um, I'll give you a proper look at it. You can see what we've got now. It's, um, it's the complete battery box, nice thick bottom on it, decent end, and um, there you go, hammer and dolly so that it will fit the car, and uh, yeah that's it, uh, good penetration on all the wells, obviously all these seams are going to get seam sealed anyway, it'll look really nice when it's, uh, it's covered in, um, it's got a seam sealer on it and uh, some, uh, you pull grab text as well and we've painted it up, so uh, I think we'll call it a day there for this and I think we'll come back tomorrow and finish the, this off um, yeah I think that'll do us for today onwards